Good evening, everyone. Let us thank Pierce Pearson for that lovely, lovely rendition, his beautiful performance, and wishing us all a Merry Christmas. And I salute the United States Army Band, Pershing's own brass quartet, who bless us tonight with their warm, beautiful music. Thank you again. As Speaker of the House, it is my honor uh, to welcome Americans from across the country, visually, virtually, and in person, uh, to the annual lighting of the Capitol Christmas tree. And as a proud Californian, it is especially exciting that this 84-foot tree, white fir, hails from California's Six Rivers National Forest. You've heard that about four, five, or six times already this evening. And it is pretty, it's a source of pride for us. Uh, let us thank the architect of the Capitol, Brett Blanton, the U.S. Forest Service Chief, Randy Moore, uh, for making this possible for us. And I join my colleagues in thanking all who made this possible, those who selected and chopped down the tree, those who transported it here around the state of California and across the country, uh, those who decorated the tree, the children who made the decorations, all who made this glorious occasion possible. Thank you, uh, Architect Blanton and Forest Chief Moore. Thank you so much. Let's thank them. That's an applause line. <laughs> For nearly six state uh, decades, the Capitol Christmas tree has stood on the West Front Lawn, bringing Americans together during the holiday season. In wartime and in peace, in tribulation and triumph, the Christmas tree has offered a sense of hope and resilience to the nation as we thank our men and women in uniform then and now and always. This tree is our symbol of hope. That is to earn the endless nickname, the People's Tree, a testament to its special ability to unite us in comfort and joy, no matter who we are, where we're from. And that spirit inspires us tonight as we continue to battle the pandemic. So let us give thanks for the many blessings which God has bestowed upon us, uh, in which we rejoice uh, this holiday season, especially a miracle vaccine, the miracle vaccines that will allow us to safely be with loved ones. As we gaze upon this tree, let us recall the theme of this year's ceremony, six rivers, many people, one tree. Indeed, this tree's roots are in the Six Rivers home, again, uh, to beautiful natural and cultural diversity. Represent The tree itself is represented by Jared Hoffman. Uh, the forest is shared by Jared Hoffman and, and uh, our dear colleague, Mr. LaMalfa. So this is a bipartisan tree, a nonpartisan tree. And isn't it perfectly symmetrical? Isn't it perfectly symmetrical? It is, again, the tree's roots are in Six Rivers, the home to beautiful natural and cultural diversity. In its journey here, it touched the lives of countless communities across the nation. And today, Americans from across the nation have gathered to bask in its light when it comes shortly. And as we gather here tonight, we remember our nation's greatest strength, our unity. And that each time our great nation has been tested, we have always been able to meet any moment and conquer any challenge together. I'm so honored to be here with our distinguished leader, Mr. McCarthy, Mr. M all of our colleagues, Mr. LaMalfa, Mr. Hoffman, Ms. Lofgren, uh, our dear Senator Dianne Feinstein, who is with us this evening, and those who have entertained us tonight. At our VIP tonight, our very important person is Michael Mar Mavris, a fifth grader from at Mary Peacott Elementary School in Crescent City, California, Mr. Hoffman's district. How fitting that he is here tonight, and he too is from Six Rivers. In his winning essay, he wrote about the indomitable spirit of the land and its indigenous speak people. And he beautifully captured how this is reflected in the glorious tree before us. He has asked that before he writes, lights the tree, that he share some of the words of his winning essay with you. So please welcome our very important person, Michael Mavris, to the podium. Thank you. 